Welcome to part six of the uh, pivot table tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, I want to give you an opportunity to reinforce um, some of the skills we learned in the first five. So this is a um, a data set. Um, I've added the instructions to the sheet just for the purposes of the video, um, but you can read these on your own back on the instructions tab. Um, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to try on your own. I encourage you to pause the video and uh, once I get done introducing the data um, and give you an overview to try this on your own. So I'd like you to create four new worksheets um, with pivot tables that analyze uh, the data shown in this marketing worksheet. So the idea behind this is you have um, a subject ID number that we won't really use um, because there's nothing really to analyze about an ID number, but um, we would want to know how these three different factors affect the, the average score. Um, so what's the average score? Um, suppose these are four different classes, um, supposedly different um, instructional methods maybe, um, and we want to see which one is more effective, A, B, C, or D. And um, we want to look at, at the effect of age and gender um, on the average score as well. So at this point, you could uh, insert a new pivot table and um, using the uh, videos in uh, parts one through five, um, review some of the things that we've done, but um, you want to create a pivot table and chart that allows you to um, get the average score in part one um, by age and then um, group the ages in four-year intervals and also add um, slicers that allow them to look at gender and class and a chart to accompany it. Um, parts two and three are really the same um, as part one. You're just moving different things in the rows and modifying uh, the slicers and the headings as needed. Um, the fourth part is a little bit different because you're looking at more of the demographics of the study. So what is the breakdown of the gender? Um, so you would want to put gender in both the row and in the sum value to get a count of each gender. And then um, you could have done that for age and class as well, but um, for the example, we'll just have one. So at this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and um, try to do this on your own to test your, your knowledge at this point and review anything that you have to. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm back. I assume that you uh, went off and worked on this. So I'm going to um, kind of quickly go through this since we've already gone. We're not really going over any new concepts here. So I'm going to kind of quickly uh, show you each of these four um, steps in, um, in analyzing this data set. So I'm going to insert a pivot table. Um, for this one, I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to limit the range. Since I had the instructions on the worksheet, um, I'm going to change the default of row F or column F to column E. But then when I get the new worksheet, um, I'm going to put score in the sum value and I'm going to change it from a sum to an average. You can see the average score is 83.9. And then I'm going to put the age in the row. And I'm going to insert slicers for the gender and the class. And now I want to add my grouping. So I showed you two different ways to do grouping. You can select multiple cells, like if I wanted age 18 to 29 to be together, I would select these and right click and group. And then I would um, give my group a label, collapse, do all the things that we did in the previous video, the second part of the previous video. But um, the instructions say to have fixed for your interval, intervals. So in order to do that, I want to select just one cell. That's very important. So I'm selecting just the 18 
or any individual entry and I'm going to right click and group and I get my window I'm going to go from biggest to smallest 18 to 36 and but I'm going to change the 1 to a 4 to um, have the ages be in four year intervals. So it's going to show ages eight to 18 to 21 together and so on. So now it's just a matter of cleaning it up. I'm going to call this age group um, average score. Um, I always, I, I never like to leave a bunch of decimal places. It just doesn't look good. Um, I'm going to make this percentage. Maybe I'll center it. Um, resize my slicers a little bit. And I can insert a, um, a pivot chart here, um, column or a bar chart. Uh, we don't really need a legend, but um, The title um, might say something like average score by age group. And you can see um, that younger people tended to do a little bit better than older people. Um, we could click on the slicers and see the subgroups within female versus male. Uh, we could see the different classes, but we'll, um, we're going to have other worksheets that focus specifically on that. And I'm going to call this average score by age. Okay, in order to quickly uh, modify this to look at average score by gender, I'm going to make a copy of this worksheet. So I'm going to select Move or Copy, Create a Copy. And from here, most everything that I designed is fine. Uh, I'm going to change the worksheet name to average score by gender. I'm going to modify the, uh, the row to show gender instead of age. And then I, um, I no longer need the gender as a slicer, but it would be nice to have the, um, the age group as a slicer. So I'm going to insert a slicer and I'll put age in there. And um, all I really need to do is update some headings, gender, and average score by gender. So it appears from the chart that uh, the females did much, much better than the males, given that the um, bar is twice as large, but if you look at the raw scores, you can see how it's kind of lying with statistics because you can see the scale only goes from 80 to 86. If you wanted to modify that, um, you could right click on Format Axis and change the scale. Um, let's say you want it to go from 0.6 to 1. You could um, change that and then you would see maybe a more reflective um, difference in the in the age groups so I can make a copy of this um, and do something similar for the um, class which is probably the the um, analysis that they might most be interested in since they have these four different classes. So I'm going to create another copy and I get this error message again. Don't worry about that. Um, but I'm going to rename the worksheet average score by class. 
I'm going to uh, modify the um, pivot table to move gender out and class in the row. Um, now I just simply need to modify a couple headings. So I'm going to change gender to class in both the table heading and the chart title. And we can see that uh, classes uh, D, C, and A were pretty equal, all between 84 and 88 percent, and B was a little bit lower. Um, I might want to update my slicer here since we already have class in a row. Um, give the user the ability to look at different genders within this chart. So I want to insert a new slicer and select gender and move that up next to the other one. Whoops. And now they're able to look at females and males and so on. Um, you can, with the slicers and the tables, um, if you go into the design tab, um, you can do things like apply different colors. I don't really know what looks best, but um, So you can ha you can have different um, color schemes um, with the different slicers. Or you can make them. One thing that would be good if you had multiple things on the same sheet, you could um, make them all the same color. Um, the chart I think is a little bit different. You would have to right click and select the fill. kind of like that. Um, if you had a second set, let's say you were having this worksheet be on the same worksheet as this one, um, having different colors that show the different sections of the um, analysis is kind of a nice touch. But there is a lot of uh, formatting that you could do if you wanted to, to uh, jazz it up. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to make uh, one last copy of this. Don't worry about these uh, quarter and demographic. Uh, those are just kind of a bug in, in Excel. So now we're going to look at um, call it gender breakdown. So now in our pivot table, um, we're going to remove average score and class, and we're going to have gender as both the row and the table. Um, percentage no longer makes sense, um, so we'll just have a, a comma style, and I'll decrease the decimals. And we already have gender in the um, as a slicer, but we could um, insert class instead. So now you can just see a breakdown. So there were 14 people aged 22 to 25, eight males, six females. Um, you could also add the score as a um, as a slicer, and let me show you what that allows you to do. If you you have to have the um, pivot table selected to add a slicer, so I've added the score as a slicer, even though it's kind of a long list. Um, what you could do then is like select multiple 
scores or you could filter it um, let's say I select everything below 60 and let's see who did really bad on the test well there were four males and one female that did really badly on the test and I could clear it and then say uh, let's look at those that scored 95 or above and there were seven females and six males that met that criteria um, this chart doesn't really make sense anymore so I'm gonna change the type to a um, pie chart and um, change the title to show the um, gender breakdown, I guess you could call it. And then again, I'm going to do my favorite, um, adding data labels and then formatting the data labels to show the category name and the percentage, but not the value. So then you can see overall in the study we had 52% males, 48% females. Um, if you look at the age group, and we could do something similar for um, all these different age groups. Okay, so hopefully um, you were able to um, come close to on your own creating these um, three worksheets or four worksheets average score by gender average score by class gender breakdown usually you don't have a workbook that has two different data sets and the analyses um, combined but um, just for the tutorial I thought it would be easier if we just had one file that we worked on the same time. So I've done a lot of work on this file so I'm going to save it one last time. Um, if you're ever working in a lab on campus, um, be aware that the, the um, computers like in the library and the labs um, wipe clean every time you save something. So everybody in the class has this um, resource called OneDrive. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Google Drive or um, Dropbox, it's the same thing. So um, if you save a file and you're working on campus, there's this OneDrive Xavier University that you can um, you can save your work in. So I'm going to call it Pivot Table Tutorials. Sometimes it's a little slow because it has to uh, store the data on the internet on a virtual drive. Um, but if you ever uh, log into your email and then click over to um, Office, these little buttons to the right, one of the options is OneDrive. You have a list of your full, um, different folders and files that you stored um, remotely. So um, I could order by modified. And I should have the um, file that I just stored. So here's my pivot table tutorials stored about a minute ago. So I could. Um, select those to da this to download if I were on a different computer and wanted to um, review what I had done um, in a different location. Um, one thing you don't really want to do for this class is to just open it by clicking on it because that'll open it in a, um, a web-based view of Office 365 and you wouldn't be able to do all the work that we do in the class in um, in that viewpoint. So you want to um, select the data, 
download it to something local and then work on it from there. Or you could open Excel um, and go to File Open, browse to your OneDrive from there. Okay, so this uh, concludes uh, the week one tutorials. Um, please practice your work before um, doing the assignment. Um, I'll have a, uh, a short video over the assignment and um, there'll be a little bit of extra um, information that'll be on the skills test that'll be in uh, week two's tutorials. So anyway, I'm going to um, conclude this video now and I look forward to um, speaking with you for the week two tutorials.